It's time to get all set for Sunday, a podcast for busy and distracted Catholics with your hosts, Scott Williams and Jeff Trailer. When I hear the coffee brewing, I think, what the heck we doing? Because I got barely any sleep last night. As the diaper bag I pack with hot wheels, dollies, and some snacks, I say, oh, pray there'll be a seat in the cry room this time. It's all right, because I'm all set for Sunday. It's all right, because I'm all set for. It's all right, because I'm all set for. It's all right, because I'm all set for Sunday. Welcome to All Set for Sunday, a podcast for busy and distracted Catholics to be a little more prepared for Sunday Mass. My name is Scott Williams. My co-host is Jeff Trailer. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Scott. How's it going, bud? It's great, man. What's new? Uh, it's summer. It's hot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I just sold my house and moved, so that's exciting. Amazing. Yeah. How's the new house? Uh, like, tiring. Yeah, <laughs> exhausting, but it's brand new. Uh, so that's fun. Smells that new house smell. Yes. Yeah. All right. Our guest today is Father Sam Roscoe. How are you, Father? Doing very well. Thank you. This is our first time that you've been on the podcast as a priest, that's which right. is wildly exciting. But it you is. are you are officially our only guest who has appeared as a seminarian, mm-hmm. as a, a guest appearance, as a transitional deacon. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then as a priest. And I was a priest. Pretty exciting. It is. Kind of you've hard been, to believe. I mean, you've been a priest for hours. At this <laughs> two, point. two and a half weeks, I think. Yeah. We're about there. That's Amazing. awesome, though. How yeah. was ordination? It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was God is too good. It was it was pretty awesome. I I could imagine. I couldn't. I have no idea what it would be like, but pretty, pretty amazing. Um did where did you do your diacon or ordination? Was that at St. Minard? Yeah, so we got ordained at St. Minard in the Arch Abbey Church. Okay. So that's where we were ordained deacons. Wonderful. And I'm assuming cathedral for... Uh... For priesthood. Yes. Yeah. St. Yeah. Peter and Paul. Yep. Yeah. St. Peter and Paul. And that would make ma- sense. And then your mass of... Uh... Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was at Holy Rosary. Holy Rosary. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. We just heard, Who did we just talk to the other day that was at that mass? I just talked to somebody. Uh... I don't know. Was it Father McCarthy? Well, I'm sure he was, he was there. Definitely after that. Um, there were 25 priests there, so you can take your pick. Does everybody do it on the? So no, like there's it was guys that got ordained, right? Yeah. And then does everybody have the mass of Thanksgiving the same night? Um, it kind of varies. So Father Bobby did his Saturday night, I think, okay. at like 7 p.m. at St. John's, and then Anth or Father Anthony did his on one at 1 p.m. at St. Malachi, and then I did mine at 2:30. So. It just it just kind of depends. That's who it was. A couple weeks ago, we had Deacon Hart. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Deacon on the Keith. podcast, yeah. he he's spending his summer with Father Christian mm-hmm. uh, at St. Joseph's. So Deacon Keith was at the ord- at your ordination, but then went to Father Anthony's Mass of Thanksgiving. That was the conversation we had. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going crazy. No, you're doing great. <laughs> Thanks. I am. All right, we ready for the two minute drill? I think so. We'll find out. Uh, 13th Sunday? 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, Glad you're ready. Um, I am. Yeah. We'll we'll see with this fresh theology degree uh, over here how (laughs) well I do. Um, It is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our first reading comes from Wisdom. Sometimes I think of seminary as in like my tax dollars at work, but it's like my tithing dollars. So it's like... (laughs) My cathedraticum at work. Yeah. See, see if we got our money's worth out of this one. Am I right? Um, that's a terrible way to think. good. You can always give more money. So. <laughs> this is what we were able to do for the the pennies that you donate. Um, all right. So in we our first reading comes from the Book of Wisdom. Um, we learn in here that God did not make death, and He doesn't take any pleasure in the destruction of the living. And that everything he created is wholesome, and there's no poison of destruction in them. God creates humans for immortality. They're made in his image. And that death has entered the world uh, through the devil's envy. And that those who belong to the devil are the ones who experience it. So, um, some good information, but a little frightening, (laughs) for sure. Let you take that one, Father. Um, our responsory of Psalm is uh, it comes from Psalm 30. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. How do you feel about that one? Uh, 
it, it's meh. meh. We have categories for our Psalms, oh. Father. Uh, this is only meh? Yeah. Well, here's your categories. Banger, meaning like you can just hear the cantor just belting it out, just a classic, mm -hmm. right? Meh, which is like, that's a really good psalm, but like, and then mumblers. Mm. Mumblers are ones that like just get so complicated and long that like nobody in the church is actually finishing the whole response when they say it. And even you have to like look to understand what it is. Yeah. Disclaimer, all uh, of the res responsorial psalms are good. Yes. But some are just meh. Yeah. They're yeah. still good. Like I Got think it. people get through this one. I don't, it, it has some good breaks and it's easy to remember. So I think people will be able to say it. It's not, so it doesn't go full mumbler, but yeah. Um, what? Uh, just my analysis. I, I call it a content we put out. Yes. I mean, you should basically be teaching at St. Margaret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. This, this is what my, this is what my tax dollars will get me. Um, <laughs> I'll do, I'll do response to a psalm day, uh, in <laughs> seminary. Um, uh, our second reading then comes from uh, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8. Um, so Paul encourages the Corinthians to excel in the grace of giving, just as they excel in faith, speech, knowledge, and love. Um, that's not Google Sheets, it's Excel. Uh, and he reminds them <laughs> of Jesus' grace, uh, who became poor so that his poverty, um, so that through his poverty we could become rich. And then he talks about how he aims for equality, not to burden them, but to ensure that those who have plenty can share with those in need and that equality exists there. And he gives the example of the Israelites gathering of manna, uh, where those who are who gathered much did not have too much, and those who gathered little did not have too little. So, so just be fair, yeah. share, give to others. And then uh, we have our gospel reading now. Here's the big question. Yeah, Father. Uh, Are you a long-form guy or a short-form guy? <laughs> Usually I'm a long form guy, but this this weekend I'm going to do the short form. All right. God bless you, Father. You're already killing You're this awesome. priest thing. This is good. Yeah. Um, we were probably going to do the short form anyways. So. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I gotta I gotta follow my brackets here. Inside the bracket. Yeah, there's two sets of brackets. So, all right. Tricky, tricky. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat. Oh, this is Mark chapter five. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jarius came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hand on her so that she may get well and live. He went off, he went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. And he did not, he did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, uh, a child of 12, arose immediately and walked around. At, the, at that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. Sorry, that was my favorite line, and so I paused right before it. <laughs> get her a snack. All right. All right, Father Roscoe, did Jeff get anything wrong, incorrect, any heresies that we just need to wow. set the record straight on? Not mm. that I heard. Go ahead. Maybe we can ask the Archbishop or something. I, I have learned that I used to make a lot of mistakes on here, and I've either gotten better or our priests have stopped listening to me. <laughs> either way, it seems to have worked out all right. You yeah. got the but best line, like... Make her give her something to eat. Yes, then, it is the best line. Awesome. Like, Lutha Coombe is pretty good too, but yeah. um, <laughs> the the pre snack line. But yeah. all right, Father Oscar, are you are you assigned at a parish yet? Like right now, or are you kind of a free agent until July? I'm kind of a free agent until July third. Okay. So this weekend I have masses at Holy Rosary at my home parish. Father okay. McCarthy is on vacation, I think. So gotcha. I'm covering the Sunday masses for him. What a slouch! <laughs> and then can you kind of do whatever you want until? 
until yeah. your assignment? Yeah, we basically have no obligations until July 3rd. Uh, we've got the priest convocation, although by the time that people are watching this, it will have already have happened the week, yeah. the week before this coming weekend. Okay. Um, but, Which is the really, like, serious way of saying, like, all the priests get together and have a have party. A party. Oh, yeah. 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 A week-long party. It's pretty great. Yeah. There's golfing. There usually is a boat, but this year there's no boat. No boat. No boat. I, I have always loved hearing stories about the boat trip. There are so <laughs> many boat stories. It's pretty great. Yeah. But no boat this year. Bummer. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm in a year too late. Well, uh, where where are you going to be? Are you going to be at, at Holy Rosary on the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time? Yep. All yep. right. What are, you, what are you preaching on? So I'm going to preach on the gospel um, okay. because the past couple of weekends, we've had these really beautiful gospels about faith. So like two, week, two weekends ago, we had the gospel of the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. you know, faith is like a mustard seed. And really like what God can do with even just a little bit of, of faith on our part is just amazing. Um, and then uh, last weekend, we had the gospel of uh, our Lord calming the storm at the sea. And then now we have uh, the gospel of the hearing of the healing of the daughter of Jairus. So there's a lot of a lot of parables we're getting and a lot of stories about faith. So the line that I'm going to kind of hone in on is where Jesus says, do not be afraid, just have faith. Hmm. And, you know, it's it's a great line. And in some ways, it's kind of like, OK, well, I am, I'm still afraid <laughs> like we can yeah. have faith, but I'm still afraid. But what our Lord is trying to get at is the importance of faith and actually i think where faith comes from so so often we can we can think about faith as something that we do right like you know i'm going to have super strong faith i'm going to faith my way into heaven you know because <laughs> it's it's me me just you know being really strong with my faith brute force brute force <laughs> yeah and that's really not what faith is uh, faith is actually a response. Faith is our response to God who acts first in us. And I think that we can see that very clearly, really, in all of these passages for the past couple of Sundays, how, you know, faith is us responding to God's initiative. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus in on. I had a, um, I did one semester of studies in Rome, and we had a professor. He was a Polish Dominican. Do you know Father Tim Wichiscala? Very well. Okay. Very well. Did you know he studied in Rome? He lived I there did. For... I okay. did. We actually overlapped. When I was in Rome, he was my spiritual director because oh, he was wow. also studying in Rome. This is amazing because now a Father Tim reference to Rome has naturally happened on, <laughs> even without him being here. I'm sure it happens a lot. Every time he's on. <laughs> and in most of his homilies. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's all right. We... Well, anyway, so... You're ordained this, uh, now. You don't have to be scared of these guys. Oh, he, he is, oh, he is the vicar for clergy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's so there's like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, well, anyway, there's this priest in Rome who was who taught us moral theology. His name was Father Geertek. And kind of his whole thing, like, you know, they say every priest has one homily that they kind of rehash every Sunday. So his one homily was this, was about faith. And he he thought you know, he's like in our modern church, in our modern world, we were too too caught up with this idea that, you know, we are doing these things. Mm -hmm. We're doing, you know, what what have you, and kind of falling into like this Pelagianism. And he said, no, it's God. So he talks about the spark of faith. Like whenever he talks about faith, he's like, think of a spark plug. Like faith actually comes from God initiating it. Like it's like a spark plug in our souls. And God gives us the gift of faith, which we respond to, but only because he initiates. So I think that's a really important thing to remember. And what, what that kind of flows into is our response to faith is growing deeper to God in prayer, is fostering a relationship with him and uh, continually growing deeper in that through making time to read the scriptures, to pray, to go to mass and encounter him in the sacraments and in our prayer. I think that that's really interesting because you said that's our response to faith, whereas I think a lot of times people would think that prayer is like the cause of it. It is yeah. the, the, oh, the, I'm going to grow my faith mm -hmm. by praying more, except it's actually the response of what is already ignited within us. Absolutely. I like that. Absolutely. And really that in, in our prayer, that's how God kind of deepens our faith. Like he, as we go to him in prayer, he enlivens it and kind of sparks that fire and, and uh, draws us closer to him. This is a really fun like run of for for or, for just boring old ordinary time. This is a really great run of homil of like gospels here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really interesting. You talked about like the the phrase he uses, be not afraid, have faith. Mm -hmm. And just have faith. Just have faith. Yeah. Which is like the the calmer, nicer version of last week's gospel where like they they wake him up and he's grumpy and he just starts yelling at him about like do you not trust me? Do you not like, you don't, mm -hmm. I just think it's, it's, we hear like three weeks in a row, like, oh, here's a parable. And like, here's just some instruction here. Like, I don't know. I think it, I, I like this, how all these, I mean, obviously there was some intention. We do this every couple of years where I'm like, it's amazing. 
amazing they put all these readings right together in a row like this is unbelievable like somebody thought through this you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it is like i i this one has particularly struck me as we've talked about it over these weeks and like mm -hmm. and as i've listened to the hom to homilies and like listened to this play out and honestly like also kind of like some softballs tossed to you for your first couple of weeks here like yeah. i mean this is this it's pretty good ones to hit on you didn't get oh, yeah. anything super complicated or anything yeah, yeah so right. so god is the spark and so what should our response be like what's our call to action what do we need to do to you know keep the engine running sure um well like i said it really starts with prayer and but really prayer is just a response and like our response is to just go with him and go to him in confidence mm -hmm. like to say, okay, Lord, you've given me this gift of faith and I'm just going to trust you completely. And here is everything. I'm pouring out my soul to you. But we see that like in the example of Jairus, like he he knows his daughter's at the point of death and he goes to the Lord begging. I I know you can heal her and yeah. heal her. And he does. And he raises her from the dead. Um, you know, the, the disciples probably should have like, they didn't go quick enough to the Lord, perhaps, but uh, at, at the storm at sea, but he's got the power and he does. He calms the sea and everything's great. Um, so it's it's really just all of these are stories and examples of how like faith is like the mustard seed. Like it seems like a small little thing that once God ignites it and we respond, it grows to be this gigantic thing that can change the world through us, but through God's grace. Awesome. I love the... So the the phrase Talitha Kum, I'm probably mispronouncing it, I don't, but just say it confidently. Talitha Kum uh, has Perfect. become uh, like a almost like a battle cry around my house. I have three daughters, right? I have uh, 17, 15, 13, and uh, my youngest, Charlotte. I, a couple years ago, when we were at a conference, I like. I go to these conferences and work these, and then I just spend all my money and buy my kids stuff at them. Uh, but it's at Catholic conferences, and like I want to just give my if I want to give my kids more rosaries and stuff, I'll happily do that. But <laughs> I got socks. her a sweatshirt that she <laughs> or socks. They got plenty of socks. Uh, the uh, but I bought her a sweatshirt that says Talitha Kum on it. And she wears it everywhere. She was so intentional. It's probably like it's a really nice sweatshirt, and mm -hmm. she wanted to wear it, take it to camp. She just went to CYO camp, but in we pressed her a little bit on like, are you sure you want to take that? It's really nice. And she was like, well, yeah, I want to talk to people about it. Like I want them to ask what it means. And I want like, it was just, it's a really awesome thing for her to want to share that and talk about that and like share this story. So this gospel, like significant meaning there, but it, I think it just, I don't know, like there's that, that layer of, you know, he's asking this little girl to rise, but like in, in saying this, it's also a call to us to, act on what we're being given right to write like he the faith the faith had to be there right but he still gives her the instruction to rise like her action mm -hmm. is to stand mm -hmm. up and and mm -hmm. when he takes her hand and i think we have to act on that in the same way but absolutely i don't know act just really good confidence. one yeah it's really good one when you got daughters like this is a good one to yeah yeah and you raise some good ones oh thanks good work yeah they're pretty good kids um i feel like we have a significant amount of dumb questions that we have to get through today should we move I'm on sure. That? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. My first one, knowing the current political climate in the, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, I, thought I, I thought I'd get the brand new priest a little nervous. No, this isn't a father James episode. I want to ask the super hard ones. <laughs> he somehow gets all of our most complicated questions, but um, he's also started to have like a physical reaction. Anytime we start a question. Like, like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, you, you should tell us, tell us about shards. <laughs> There's another way to go about this. Yeah, I don't know how else right. to like lead into that. You, shit. yes, you all heard me correctly. Shards. Uh, shards. Shart, uh, yes. tell us about your experience with shard. <laughs> so, to give a little context, <laughs> shard is a city in France. <laughs> It's a famous city in France that has a, one of the most famous cathedrals in the world. And the cathedral is built to house the relic of Our Lady's Veil. So it's kind of a pilgrimage destination. Um, and in France, they would probably pronounce it differently than we would in America. But all America just says chart because that's what we say. Um, so if I were Father Eric Augustine, I would probably say like chart. <laughs> uh, but that's not even right. So. Um, if you know Father Eric Augustine and you're not watching the YouTube, go there. <laughs> it's even better. It'll be great. Uh, anyway, every year, uh, this this was actually the 40th anniversary of it. Every year, there's a big pilgrimage, a walking pilgrimage for Catholics, 
where you walk from Paris to Chartres. And it's it's a three day pilgrimage. So you're walking it's a long walk days. to Chartres. <laughs> It's a long walk, <laughs> but it's there this year, there were over 18,000 Catholics as part of this. So it's always over Pentecost weekend. So, um, which was two weeks before my ordination. So I went with two other friends, one who's a seminarian, uh, the other seminarian from Holy Rosary, his name is Levi. Um, but the three of us, we did this pilgrimage. So we walked from Paris to Chartres uh, over a course of three days and with 18,000 other Catholics. And it was super amazing. Lots of good experiences. What's a... Uh... What do you guys do? <laughs> well, so it's it starts with mass. So we started at like six... also. What is it like? Did can you actually see Our Lady's veil? Um, yes. Or is it like one of those things where it's like it's there's a veil there. back there? It's behind this, this gold case that looks like a veil. No. Yeah. So the reliquary for Our Lady's veil is actually in like a glass case, so you can actually see the see the cloth. But is it blue? Oh, uh, it was like white, maybe mm. off white. I'm sure it was white at one point, but yeah. I mean it's over two thousand years old. Sure. So. sure. Um. Yeah, it's a little off colored now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so basically each day, like you're walking probably 20, 25 miles each day. So it's it's quite the quite the hike. But during the whole walk, uh, there are there's over like 200, 200 to 300 priests and seminarians who are walking. And the priests and seminarians are there to kind of like give counsel to people, to like give little ferberinos. The priests will hear confessions as you're walking. Um, you're praying, you're singing, you're talking to people. Like so many just amazing uh, opportunities, but um, each day we had mass. Like we had mass before we started in Paris. Then the second day we had um, mass in a, at a campsite, and uh, then the third day we had mass at Chart Cathedral with uh, Cardinal Mueller. So it was it was a really really good experience. Uh, what was the word that you just said, Farver? Farverino. What's a farverino? Farverino. So a farverino is a, an Italian word that means like. I don't know what it means literally, but it's like a short little homily yeah. that you kind of just come up with off the cuff. So homilito? Like, a homilito, yeah. So like what most priests do for daily masses, that's a fervorino. Like mm. don't really prepare and just kind of start talking about the gospel for a minute. Fervorino. Oh, all right. What what a lot of parishioners 20 minutes in wish was happening <laughs> on Sundays? Oh, hopefully not, but yeah. <laughs> that's, that's likely. I'm going to just start walking into mass going, how about a fervorino this week, Father? And just give him a wink and walk away. Well, Father Tim will know what that means because he went to Rome. You know? yeah, he, he, studied, Rome. he studied in Rome. He studied in Rome. Yeah, the question, but I'm about to change pastors, so. That's true. Well, I'm sure Father Eric Johnson would know as well. Probably. But, um, I I would love to ask more questions, but I can't. Just my, I can't. You can't I take can't. the dark anymore. I can't do it and like not have us have to edit the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh like I just wanted to ask about like the weather. Yeah, like do you have to huh? You gonna ask it? No. I was okay. just gonna say was like, was the weather good or did it like look like it was gonna be dry but then it ended up wet? It looked like it was gonna be dry and it rained substantial. Uh-huh. <laughs> You had him. Sorry, I, I did. <laughs> and then it rained unexpectedly. And it rained unexpectedly. You know, That's tough to deal with. It was. We were hiking through a lot of mud. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, part of a pilgrimage is part of a pilgrimage is you know taking all of these kind of unexpected sufferings and things that offered up and offering it up to the Lord. Offer it up. So that's what you do. All right. Um. Where is your assignment? Where is your first assignment going to be? St. Jude. Oh, that's Saint right. Jude Parish with Father Marshall. God bless you. Did you not know that? I did. I forgot. Oh, it is exciting. Yeah. You'll be at... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> associate, associate pastor of, of St. Saint Saint Jude. Jude Parish. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, I also hear that you get your own uh, four-bedroom, two-story house. I do. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a fixer upper, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and right next door to Roncalli High School. That's right. I've been told I can hear the bell, like the period bell. Yeah. Like from inside the house. So it's going to oh, be What happen. a joy. I know. It'll, be... It'll ruin your naps during the day. <laughs> You've been in Europe enough. I'm assuming you'll take naps. Um, but I, so one of the things I was going to ask about, you have, you come from a large family, correct? Mm -hmm. You're the oldest. I am. Of how many siblings? 
Well, I just have three siblings, okay. but there were four of us, so not gotcha. super large. But Gotcha. But two of your siblings are at Roncalli. They are. So your sisters will be just right next door. They will be. I'm sure they're delighted. <laughs> well, I think there's something really cool about that. Like we have, awesome. we have all these old fogies who are on this podcast all the time, these just ancient priests who are on here. I saw them and like, party. yes, exactly. Like, yeah. So to talk to his siblings, like whatever, they're all like grown up. But I want I I want to get your perspective on like being the oldest, having younger siblings who are still like in grade school and high school and like mm-hmm. doing these things. Like what is what has been your experience? Like what do you what do you think that ex- what has been that yeah, sorry, what has that experience been like for you through your ordination here and like taking on these roles and like and doing these things in like something that directly affects your siblings in that way? Like what do you how how has that been? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's still kind of unfolding. So I wish I had a had kind of a clear answer to that. But like just today, um, my grandpa's in a nursing home. So I actually went and said mass for him in his room in his nursing home this morning. But my mom and one of my sisters was there. And it was kind of just a really different experience to be the one celebrating mass. And then like mm. your mom and your sister and your grandpa are right there. And to give, you know, Holy Communion to your sister who, you know, is your little sister. <laughs> like yeah. there's just something really profound. And like your role is kind of shifting between brother to priest to father. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opportunities to explore that being at Roncalli and and uh, celebrating mass for them, I'm sure, uh, at Roncalli. And maybe I'll call them up with the homily and see if they can answer some questions. There you go. So yeah. Watch out <laughs> <laughs> if they're listening. I doubt they're listening. <laughs> uh, no, I th- I just think it's a really cool. I've I've gotten to meet your sisters before. Well, I don't. Your uh, let's see. It's tell me their names. Kate and Sarah and Katie. Sarah and Sarah Katie. is going to be a senior, and Katie yes. will be a junior. So Sa- Katie and my daughter Lydia played on a kickball team together. Oh, really? At one point in time, at, at down at Our Lady of the Greenwood. Uh-huh. So Queen of the Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. Sorry. Um. So Father Eric moment. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's exactly where it came from. <laughs> um, yes, pastor of Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the Archdiocese of Indiana. Yes, <laughs> which is not the Diocese of Lafayette in, in Indiana. Correct. Yes. Um, <laughs> but we digress. No, like having gotten to know, like, and and I saw, and then I saw some of your siblings uh, volunteering at Holy Rosary at Italian Fest when we were there. So I just it it made me excited to be able to talk to you about this because I'm sure it's like a very unique dynamic. It's one thing, like a lot of priests have the experience of, of, and can tell the story. And I'm sure it's unique for everyone of your parents and, and grandparents and things like that. But having siblings that like young, young of an age as your, as this is unfolding for you and really like getting an assignment where you're literally next door, like yeah. that, I think that's just going to be a really powerful and cool thing. And who knows if that, like how much they'll embrace that or you'll be able to, or what that looks like, but yeah. no, I'm things sure a neat a opportunity there. I mean, I've, I've noticed already, like they've told me that like people talk to them at school about it. They're like, Oh, your brother's, he's going to be a priest or he is a priest now. Like, what is that like? And I think it gives them a lot of opportunities to talk about their faith and to, um, maybe think about some questions they wouldn't think about otherwise. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for grace. But my, I also imagine being their older brother, they've also got some really good stories that they're uh, holding I'm on sure to. I'm sure they do. I'm sure. So they I'd do. be careful putting a microphone in front of their face <laughs> in mass because <laughs> you never know what they're going to show. <laughs> um, all right. You, you said something earlier that I thought was funny. You said, uh, that most priests only have one homily at this point, how many you've only given like five. So what, 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 what do you think is going to be your go-to? What's your one? Well, I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but also not so it's not um, that much of it. I think, I think every priest kind of has a theme that is really recurring because, you know, that's kind of the focus of their spirituality or their, their spiritual life. And if a priest is doing his job, like his homilies are going to be influenced by his prayer and by what he's bringing to the Lord and his experiences. Um, so I would say for me, I mean, my vocation, a really big part of my vocation story is like the life of prayer and growing deeper and learning how to pray and kind of communing with the Lord in that way. So I think that I often focus on prayer and like the different aspects of prayer, the different facets of prayer uh, and the importance of prayer. Um, I My favorite saint of all time, other than Our Lady and St. Joseph, and I guess now St. Jude, because I have to say that, um, is St. Alphonsus. You don't have to for another week. I guess I, I, until July 3rd. Uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori, who is an amazing saint, doctor of the church, but uh, basically, he kind of sums up prayer with this one line. He says, if you wish to be saved, you have to pray. He who prays will be saved. He who doesn't pray, you won't be saved. And that's it. 
but I think there's like a profound truth there. Like we have to ask God for grace and we have to ask God for his help and for the gift of faith and to increase in faith because we can't do it on our own. It's, it's all the Lord. And I think that, you know, that's a message that our current culture and society and church needs to hear. Like we need to focus on the Lord and on prayer. So there, that is kind of the message that came out of the first reading here. Like mm -hmm. that, that message from wisdom about like, how does death enter the world? What does God provide for us? Like yeah. pretty cut and dry, right? Like yeah. that's how we avoid the devil is yeah. in prayer and in prayer through yeah. the Lord asking for his help. Amen. I remember uh, Cardinal Tobin used to say, I can't remember CSSR, I think is the initials after his, yeah for his order. And it was something uh, sermon said repeatedly was what it stood for. <laughs> <laughs> but he had always joked about that, but he also did recycle quite a bit. But <laughs> Yeah. Well, Cardinal Tobin was a redemptorist, so San Alfonso Ligori founded the redemptorist. There you go. So there you go. Awesome. I'll circle there. Any other? I don't have any more on my list. I have a question I was told to ask you, though. Oh, oh this is this me is specifically you or specifically. us? No, this Great. is for Jeff. Wow. This is from whom? From Father C. Ryan McCarthy. C. Me, Father C. Ryan. He told me in, Charles in these words, he said, Ryan ask McCarthy. Jeff, what is girth? What is, <laughs> what is girth? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, just ask him what girth is. Uh, Father McCarthy and I, I have been blessed or cursed one way or the other of uh, being friends with Father McCarthy for the last 25 years. Uh, and we met when I was a high schooler and he was a seminarian and like, we've just oh, wow. been able to stay in touch and he celebrated our wedding at which point he, he celebrated your wedding. We, yeah. Uh, he celebrated, he can celebrate the mass at our wedding. Um, but he also preached the homily and roasted me during our homily or great. during the homily at our, our wedding. Um, but I then like, so I would see Father McCarthy on a regular basis, but then we had, there was a long stretch where like we didn't spend a lot of time together or, or you know, run into each other. So I went and met with him um, at, Holy Rosary when I was working at Ron Colley and we were, and I was doing some stuff with him okay. and he said, uh, he said, if, if girth is, or he said something along the lines of like, if girth is a virtue and a blessing, you are truly living it out. Just, <laughs> so, yeah. Just so what a real kind, sweet man from such a slender gentleman himself. Oh, I, um, I was going to make a comment that you, uh, you're here in your cassock and you wear a cassock better than most, most priests are able to pull it off uh, these days. I saw your cassock had like extra fabric bunched up and folded over. And like, Well, I'm already, the sleeves are fraying, so I don't know what that says about it, but. Oh, it just says that you wear it. It's all right. Uh, That's yeah. John Biani or something. There you go. Anyway, so God bless Father McCarthy. He recently got off a phone call with me and which he ended by saying, just remind your wife that I pray for her every time I think of you. Wow. <laughs> so what a what a gift he is to have in my life. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, Father, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an awesome treat. Will you come back again? Was that I'd love to? Okay. Yeah, this has been a pleasure. Yeah. Amazing. All right. That's it. Bye bye. Bye. It's all right, cause I'm all set for. It's all right, cause I'm all set for. It's all right, cause I'm all set for Sunday.